Well, just like that, the day is almost finished. We are here at dinner time of day one. And uh, if you're like me and most people that are doing this alongside of us, right now is the point where you're starting to second guess whether this was a good idea. You're going, oh, did I really mean to say that I'm going to fast for three days? Did I really mean I'm going to take whatever it is you're fasting and remove it from your daily rhythm? Uh, Because it's at this moment where some of the headaches are starting to set in. It's at this moment where um, some of the exhaustion is starting to set in. It's at this moment where you're beginning to realize what it means to empty yourself out of the things of this world. And, you know, dinner time, oftentimes for people, uh, at least in our home, is a place for us to kind of decompress and dialogue about what's going on in the day. It's a chance for us to unwind and to prepare ourselves for the rest that we're going to have in the evening. Theoretically, of course, with five kids, it's not always that smooth. But in concept, if you're tracking with me, um, this is the moment where you get to prepare yourself for rest. And in Hebrews chapter 4, which is what we're reading this evening, uh, there's a a couple of verses. I'm going to start in verse uh, 9 right now. And it says this in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9. So then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. And the idea of Sabbath and the idea of rest is such a beautiful concept. We know that for six days, God entered into the creation-making mode. And then on the seventh day, he took a break from everything he had been doing. And it wasn't because God needed the rest. He's God. He has no limit to his power or to his ability to keep on going. What he was doing is he was setting a rhythm in place for us to be able to follow so that we would be able to regularly rest in him. And that's what the Sabbath is all about. It's about us resting in the Lord and in his goodness. And the challenge in the the year that we're in right now, 2024, uh, the challenge is, is that life is so busy and it's go, 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 go. But it's easy for us to get it into a habit and a rhythm of not finding rest. And what I love about fasting is if you're going to keep on doing it, it's actually going to make you slow down a little bit. It's actually going to make you have to take your foot off the accelerator because you cannot go quite as hard as you could when with a full meal as you can when you don't have that nourishment inside of you. And so my encouragement to you would be uh, this evening as we're as we're wrapping up day one and as you're trying to you know sort through, was this a good idea? Was this a bad idea? If we just try to run hard the entire time during these three days, uh, we're going to struggle. But if we take our foot off the gas pedal a little bit and say, okay, God, I'm on your time frame right now. God, I need for you to sustain me. And whatever you would have me do, Lord, I'm on board for that. And if you want me to take a break from a couple of things, God, I'm on board for that too. I just want to connect and meet with you during these three days. And now you're beginning to set yourself up for a breakthrough. It's not happening on your own strength because you're emptying yourself, but rather it's happening on his strength. So may this evening, may you find rest in the Lord.